Adam Spencer. Hello, science lovers. How are you going? Welcome to another Sleek Geeks podcast with me, Adam Spencer, my compadre in Sleek Geekness, Dr. Carl Kruzhonitsky. How are you, Carl? Oh, I'm ever so peachy keen, Dr. Adam. And we've got a special guest here this week. You might know him as the surfing scientist. You might have seen him on our Sleek Geeks television show of a few years ago. You might He might have been to a school and done one of his fantastic science demonstrations for kids. But he's here to talk about a published piece of medical research he's done. Reuben Meerman, how are you, Reuben? I'm very well, thank you, gents. Now, it's that time of year, the new year. It's a time when a lot of people have given it a bit of a nudge around around the Christmas and Boxing Day lunch table, they're thinking, I'm not in great shape, I've got a New Year's resolution, I'm going to lose some weight. Today we're talking about what actually happens when you lose weight. What is it that you lose? Let's go back a step. First of all, Carl, if I eat too much for an extended period of time over Christmas and I've put on, say, five kilos over the last couple of months... What, what have I put on? You've put on mostly fat and, if you're lucky... It'll appear on your lower body. It'll actually be protective. It'll be good for you to some degree. And the, you, what you will have happened is the number of fat cells will have increased. We're, increased. We're talking below the hips. However, if you're male, almost certainly they'll appear above the waist. That is not protective. In fact, the exact opposite. It's associated with insulin resistance and obesity-related metabolic disorders. And what happens there is the fat cells get bigger. But how do I... I've got more fat, but it doesn't Mm. just mean that I've eaten fat. If I eat room and much too much carbohydrate or even much too much protein or something, I still end up putting on fat. So how does the fat become created? Where does the fat come, the extra fat that I'm now carrying around? Well, so the carbohydrates that you eat and the protein, you can convert that to fat. Your liver does this. Um, And so it takes... First of all, it takes the, or the, the glucose molecules apart, then puts them back together. It's a multi-step biochemical process, but it puts it back together as this new substance, which is fat, which is very different to carbohydrate. And those molecules, they're called fatty acids that your body makes, and then it um, stitches them together. And it becomes, it's still a fat, but it becomes triglycerides. And you'll know about those if you've gone for your blood test for just a general health test. They check to see how many of these triglycerides are floating around in your blood because you don't want too many in your bloodstream. But then those triglycerides get stored in very specialised cells called adipocytes, which is the stuff Carl's talking about. You know, you can either grow new adipocytes. If if you're putting on weight, you've got to put it somewhere. You've got to put this fat Mm. into some cells. And you can either do that by growing new cells to put it into. That's below the waist. Yep. And or you can um, add it to the cells you've already got so that they just get bigger. My fat cells get fatter. That's right. Yeah. They're the ones above the waist and they're not protective. In fact, the exact opposite, bad yeah, for you. If, if they're around your organs, that's called visceral fat. Okay, so if I've got extra fat on me to a few months ago, it doesn't that didn't necessarily come into my body as fat. It could have come in as all sorts of things, but then within my body got turned into fat. Okay, let's say now, over the next three months, in a really sensible, moderate way, I managed to lose that five kilos. A lot yeah. of people think my body just sort of burns the fat. This is what you've researched, isn't it? Yeah. What actually happens when you lose weight. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, and if, in fact, you were nuclear-powered, you could burn the fat into energy. However, you are chemically powered, yes. and this is what Ruben dealt with. Where did the question come from? When did you first start thinking about this? I, it's precisely what we're talking about. Um, I, a year and a half ago, no, two years ago, at, um, just after Christmas, I saw a photo of myself and I'd gotten a little bit of a gut. I was five kilos into overweight, and I thought, oh, I'll get rid of that, um, and just did what you're told to do, uh, started walking a little bit more, eating a bit less, started losing weight, and then thought, hey, this is interesting, read a bit of biochemistry, what what does fat become? Because having a physics degree, you know that fat's got to be made of atoms, mm-hmm. that's where kilograms come from. Feynman said, everything is made of atoms. That's it. Spot on. So... Uh, if you've done physics, then you know this this business that you cannot turn an atom into pure energy because that's what Einstein's E equals MC squared is all about. Well, so, you can nuclear power, but th- th- that's it. But we're not nuclear power we're stations. Nuclear power. So, a couple of walks around the block is not going to turn atoms into pure energy. That's no. right. Okay. That's right. So, um, so I read up very quickly, it, uh, fat becomes carbon dioxide and water. That's, wow. the, that's the two things that a fat molecule becomes and nothing else. That's You turn fat into pure energy carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So the next question that I had, and we've known that for years, that's no big discovery there, that we've known that for over 100 years. But the bit that 
I couldn't find the answer to is, all right, let's say I lose 10 kilograms. How much of that 10 kilos will I exhale as carbon dioxide and how much will come out of me as water? Ah, so the, the balance between the, the CO2 and the water was what you were looking for. Let me go back mm, a step. Yeah. You said breathe out. So as I, as I do over time, let's say I do lose 10 kilos, mm-hmm. have I... I've, I've breathed it all out. Have I, have I sweated any out? Have I pooped any out? Ah, no. good point, because did the, does the carbon recombine with some other stuff to come out of your bummin'? No, it does not. Um, so the really? only that there's no, uh, not well, essentially not one of those atoms that was in your fat will come out of your backside. The carbon, none of the carbon atoms. None of the carbon atoms. A little tiny bit of water might because faeces have water in in them, they're seventy five percent water. But um, that water can come from you know you can drink it that day. Water is in such a huge state of flux in your body. Mm. You know, if you drink a liter of water or half a liter, you've just put on half a kilo. But you'll pee that out in, if you keep doing that very quickly. So we don't really worry about the the water component too much because it's always in flux. But what what's really interesting is that it the, the numbers work out to be eighty four percent of the mass that you lose as fat comes out of your lungs. Oh, come on. Are you saying that my mouth is my major excretory organ? Correct. In fact, that's precisely how we work. Not not the one inside my underpants, the one above my neck. That's right. When I lose weight, I breathe out 84% of the weight I've lost as CO2. That's correct. Uh, Wow. Wow. Yes. It's a huge number, isn't it? And it happens, the reason we think it's taken so long for anyone to give a darn about this is um, it's invisible. It's coming out of your lungs and people forget. We all know that we exhale carbon dioxide, but people forget that that is mass. Those carbon atoms are carrying mass. Mm -hmm. So here's another lovely way to think about it. Every breath that you exhale weighs a tiny bit more than the breath you inhaled. And the little extra bit of weight is either the fat you've just burnt or whatever you ate that day. But you are losing, on average, about for a 70 kilogram person, about 210 grams of carbon come out of you a day. 210 grams of carbon a day. A day. Which is matched by, I'm guessing, 210 grams in if you're in steady state. Precisely. If you don't overeat, then it's all, it's pretty much exactly the same goes in. Okay, so wow. 84% of what I lose, I breathe out as CO2. That leaves 16% as water. That's right. Is that sweated and wee weed out? Could be because those water molecules can go, they're in your blood. That's the first place they are. And so what happens to them next is really, there's so many ways. I mean, Carl, what can, what can, um, how can you excrete water? There's, if you're breastfeeding. Tears. Yeah, tears, saliva, sweat, urine, You, you breathe a little bit of water out oh, there. Yeah. That's in, correct. In fact, yeah. I had a guy ring in on Triple J and say, Dr. Carl, there's something wrong with my bathroom scales. A, I weigh half a kilogram less in the morning than I do at night, mm. and I don't go to the toilet in the middle of the night. This, what's wrong with my scales? I said, they're right. You're, uh, you're just breathing out half a kilogram of water vapour. That's why you need to have water every couple of days or else you die. You're but breathing again, that, out. that water, if you're, if you're staying healthy and holding a healthy, steady state weight, that water you're breathing out is balanced out by the water you're drinking or containing mm. your food, etc. That's right. But we're talking if you lose weight over the long term, 84% of what you lose is breathed out as CO2. Mm. How did you work that figure out? Sleep cakes.